all right uh welcome to this training on project management organized by kingsland foundation kingsland foundation is an international ngo that promotes peace human rights social justice sustainable environment and that we're located in different parts of the world especially in nigeria where we are headquartered i uh, okay so i'm the executive director of kingsland foundation by name uh, dr barista king james Nkum. i'm a professor of administration as well as doctor of law I'll be bringing to you this training on project management as someone who is experienced in the field uh, with years of experience in project management from the angle of you know NGO operations and then uh, other forms of you know so and then this training is very important because it's it's something that uh, covers you know a, a vast disciplines you know every day people are pro executing project whether you are a contractor right you are an engineer is you know construction engineer you are civil engineer you are you know your mechanical engineer what you know even if you are a business person projects are projects you know even this training is a project we have to plan it we have to execute now I'm, I'm actually executing this project but before we came to this stage of uh, delivery we had been planning you plan the topic you plan everything has been planned so that is project so project management is it's uh is it's interesting and everyone is already involved in it and everyone should know more about it and that is why this training is for everyone who uh has one or two things to do with uh projects it doesn't matter your field or profession what matters is that you're dealing with projects so uh we're going to be looking at the nature first and foremost let's start with the nature and purpose of project management why is project management important and what are the nature of it now uh, by way of introduction so uh, this training is for three days or three uh, parts uh, the first part will deal with just the introductory part the second uh, part will deal with the planning and the last part will deal with the execution so follow uh, follow diligently and we as we move through as we navigate uh, through the course of this training so project management basically has assumed a greater importance in both public and private sectors in recent times. Now that is because, and as you can see, managers in different callings and organizations, like I said, it cuts across. You know, we, we have been involved in the management of projects and are given assignment within a project, you know, our management team. Everyone is involved in project one way or the other. We are therefore, there's also the need to understand, you know, from the beginning that the nature of project management is basically uh, involves initiating project, like I said, planning it. What is planning? Executing it, controlling it, monitoring. You know, monitoring and evaluation is one of the aspects of this training that we will have done, but it's a course on its own, it's a training of its own. But it, there has to be some kind of monitoring and closing the work of a team to achieve specific goals and meet specific success objective within a specified time. So timing is important. Now, project management actually comes with very specific and prominent constraints in terms of scope what is the scope the length of the work the times because time is it's time bound most projects are time bound that means they must be done within a particular time frame then you also have the issue of cost what's the budget what is the you know the financial implication now so we have the triple this so this issue of scope time and cost in, in, involves what we call or in, you know what we call the triple constants or constraint of project management these three are basic you have to deal with scope or the extent that's the extent to which the project is being executed the time frame and the cost implication so the primary challenge of project management managers is basically to meet project goals and objective within the given constraint this given constraint i mentioned that is the major you know concern and challenge faced by project managers now of course so hence uh because of that, planning and organization of the project plays a very important role in setting the path for a project to progress and, of course, to succeed. Aside planning for tasks and assignment within the time frame and cost assigned, project managers, you know, or management also involves developing and maintaining good relationships. There must be good relationship, you know, between the manager and all the people involved in that project, all the stakeholders concern or contributing to some or other aspect of the project so relationship is very important effectively managing partnerships and expectations of various stakeholders business partners team members 
management and so on and so forth contributes to the success of a project because it is not a one-man show it is an event that involves a lot of it's a, it's a work it's an event it's a project that involves a lot of stakeholders and all of them must be working in concert you know so uh, because of that project management involves many aspects of you know skills aspect as well as skills that need to function together in synergy so as to bring about the success and of a comp you know of a completed project within the defined timeline cost and objective so Kingsland foundation training you know basically uh, this course is aimed at empowering you the listener you the trainee you the participant with the with complete understanding and knowledge of the fundamentals of project management that will help you effectively plan and manage your project uh, for your organization you know the confidence and skill you will gain through this uh, training will help you to overcome challenges you know and be able to manage projects within time frame and cost within the budget in such a way that it will also help to enable you to set objective measures of performance of that particular project and in turn demonstrate your credibility and you know and it also will help to pave the way for further opportunities for growth and progression the idea is as you succeed in one thing you get more experience you get more exposure you get more confidence and then you keep uh, uh, getting better and better and keep succeeding at other projects you know in future so project management basically has evolved because of the need to manage complex public and private sector activities it's evolving and it's something that is moving now we've introduced uh, project management to an extent now let's look at the meaning of project management what is the meaning of project management uh, of course there are various definitions you can give for project management but you see uh, we, we like being on a practical you know on practical with all the, with this so we have a more practical definition you know some authorities actually see uh, project management as mere activities while others see them as programs of action right what i would like you to know there's activities there's action there is work to be done there is something that involves you know uh, putting one or two two heads together putting one or two ideas putting one or two plans putting one or two finances together so uh, some of the things that uh, a project seeks to produce may be tangible or intangible in terms of objective for instance a motorcycle is a tangible product but conducting a census is not a tangible product if you want to buy a motorcycle to distribute to youth or to distribute to some kind of uh, maybe disabled person as a form of empowerment that is a tangible product you are dealing with but to conduct like an election is not is a is an intangible you know product it's an intangible result you are expecting so they all uh it it, it have it it has its own complexity so some examples of uh, projects are, for instance, construction of a five-bedroom or 500-bedroom uh, hospital at Keja, you know, by the state government or by the Lagos state government is actually uh, a project. Another example of dualization of, let's say, Lagos Mini Expressway, which is still ongoing, has always been ongoing, you know, for almost uh, forever. That kind of project, road projects or road construction work are, are major are projects, you know, by the Federal Ministry of Works. Another one could be thinking of, 10 or 100 or 50 or whatever number of boreholes in a particular village by the by, by local government or by a, a politician or by a, a national assembly or you know member for his constituency all these are forms of project of course so from whatever angle we see this project some of their features are that they will require the commitment and deployment of scarce resources mark the word scarce resources resources are not just they're lying down to be grabbed and then ex used to execute a project but because there are competing needs you know and all that so every project will have to go through the process of competing you know with scarce resources for its actualization that is why planning is, is, is important so also the product will not manage themselves they will need managers they will need to be managed and that is why it, it's important so by way of definition let's say project management is the planning organizing directing and controlling of what resources resources for a rel relatively 
short term objective is not in perpetuity is not forever but for a short term objective that has been earlier established to complete specific goals now for example like i said the construction of a five bedroom hospital you know hospital at local job by the Kogi state government will require a lot of resources financial material and labor there will also be a need for procurement of land for instance you need to get a land architect to design the hospital there will be need for structural engineers civil and building engineers and electrical engineers all these personnel will be required from the onset to plan the project of course you have different types of equipment that will be needed to be sourced for example you need x-ray machines you a hospital you need laboratory equipment you need all kinds of things to equip the hospital to function optimally when finally established of course there should be a way in which all these resources should be coordinated you know and managed for effective and time management now of course in, in situations like this project management comes in handy to produce or to provide much needed expertise what am i trying to say now uh, uh when we see the purpose of project management we'll understand these things basically there's a purpose for which project has to be managed you know so some projects are actually complex that's just the truth some projects are complex and some may not be so the complex ones require some element of critical risk and uncertainty they come they, they they actually involve some kind of risk that must be taken and there is this kind of this uncertainty as to whether they will succeed or not or as to whether all the resources will be made available will be put will be have, have, you know achieved so some of these delicate uh, uh projects like census like i mentioned elections and so on and so forth you know how they will put a pressure on you to determine how you know to predict what will happen for instance what will happen next year now nigeria was supposed to have a census uh, this year it was for may for march was shifted to may for may it has been shifted in indefinitely there was an election in 2020 2023 this year and of course it happened right now some are in court so no there's some things that cannot be predicted but the project must be carried out despite the uncertainties that's why the risks involved, right? But they must be carried out. And so all these uh, uncertainties and risks must be factored in from the beginning, you know, when planning for a, for a project. Even if we could predict the political future with a, mix, with a measure of certainty, predicting the movement of prices and cost of materials or goods in Nigeria involves a lot of risk and uncertainty. You want to start a project and you already plan based on what is at hand. Only to hear that subsidy uh petroleum subsidy has been removed and the price of things have has has calculated and probably they are three times your initial budget where do you go from there do you will you will you go ahead with the project will you have to stall it and look and look for funds to uh, resources to make it up or what will you do about the uncertainty that has been created due to the inflation due to the un, unexpected unforeseen you know circumstances so in all cases therefore there's a need two we will have to say that the purpose of project management is to foresee the future that is your managing to pro, to manage a project means to to administer it and it means to see the foresee the future as you plan it's all about planning foreseeing the future and associating you know and associated problems and of course the ability to plan organize and control key activities so that the projects are completed successfully and on time in spite of those uh situations in spite of so i used to tell people that um i succeed sometimes not in not because of but in spite of not because everything was perfect but in spite of the imperfection but in spite of the uncertainty in spite of the problems and the challenges i might have encountered that is a spirit of a project manager okay I've said this already that in all cases we must see that the purpose is to manage to foresee the future and all that now what are the types of projects we have there are different types of projects and when you know the type of projects you are involved in 
it will help you to know how to manage it because every project has its own way of being managed it has its own complexity and of course its management uh, methods so there are various types of projects actually in in different organizations uh, you know and of course different managers you know are required now sometimes of the, some of the type of project like i said earlier include tangible and intangible projects i've mentioned what the tangibles are but just for the purpose of uh, uh, emphasis let me repeat that tangible projects are projects that you know uh, whose output are tangible and can be seen with the naked eyes you can see their their result you can see the outcome if i'm consulting a borehole at the you will see the the construction you will see what are coming out that is the tangible it's tangible it's it, it's visible to the eyes to the naked eyes but you so they include like a civil engineering project a hospital building project water borehole air, an aircraft manufacturing plant a make manufacturing plant all this an urban playground all these are examples of tangible now the intangible ones like i said involve some like uh, election you know census or maybe you want to do an empowerment but it's more of a training like this training now is an intangible project we are doing it for free you know it's a free project by kings and foundation you know uh we will only pay token for certification but basically it's a free training it's a project now how do we measure the time how do we measure the, uh, the, the the impact you know it's not tangible it's intangible because you cannot see the, the result you know the product the result physically of course you may see the material you may watch the video you're watching this video right now but in terms of the impact you know it's not physical it's not something you can touch or lay our hands on so internal projects are those that are that require commitment of resources but whose output cannot be seen with the naked eye in most cases they are actually social projects social in nature and in some cases they are actually political projects like uh, political uh, maybe there's political debate or some kind of political you know awareness you're creating awareness or you are concentrating people on elections on the need for peaceful election like king Clan foundation uh close to the at the heels of the 9 2023 elections we had several uh, projects on you know, what we call uh, peace building towards a violence free election in nigeria and that was was carried out in that project was carried out in several states we carried it out in Edo state we carried it out in kano state in abuja and in other states in nigeria because our aim was to promote peaceful election that is violent free and so that was a project for us but it was an intangible project right like i said of course so uh moving forward project objectives one of the things we need to know is that uh, everybody should have its objective and the objective must be clear is one of the important tasks of project managers actually to see that the project they manage meets the objective because there are no objectives objectives are like goals you set to achieve you know no objective they don't need to achieve it's like you want to travel you don't know where you're going to you just want to travel you enter your car kick the start kick the car and you're just going you don't have a direction so if you don't have a direction you wouldn't know whether you have arrived or not you also want one of the objective is completion time there must be a time to complete that project so most of projects when formulated have completion time yes it is a three months project there is five it's five months it is one year it is six months it is five years fine so a normal football match for instance lasts for 90 minutes that is a project that is an objective you are playing football you already know that football is time bound for instance so it is the duty of the referee to ensure that the referee is in this case like the manager the project manager and the football game is the project the referee will ensure that whatever he does this game must end in 90, 90 minutes so whether there is a, whether you score or you don't score is your business but you must finish so if you don't score there might be penalty there might be you know injury time and all these uh, extensions but basically the official the you know so the official time for that project is 90 minutes so it is the duty of the referee like i said to make sure that the match ends within 90 minutes and there's a, a at least there's a winner and there's a loser most public sector projects even at the time they are awarded or initiated always have a time frame attached to them the contractor must know that i uh, want to construct a road that links uh lagos to abuja and uh, but this road must be completed within one year if the time frame is very it's like in a contract when, when time is of the essence it becomes it becomes a term of that contract as a lawyer i understand what the law of contract 
and I can, uh, you know, so uh, time is always a major factor. So if you breach, what are the, what are the breaches of a contract might be? It's time. If I will have a wedding to attend next Saturday, let's say today is Tuesday, I'm going to, for Saturday and I give you a contract to sew my wedding suit. And uh, so you should know that Saturday is the objective. Saturday is the, is the target deadline. And then by Saturday, it, it is not over the work. I don't have the suit. There is no contract. You have breached that contract because I need that suit for Saturday for wedding. After Saturday, I may not need it. I may never need it. So, uh, time is of the essence. For example, the, the rehabilitation of, like I said, Lagos Benin Expressway may be projected to be completed in within 24 hours. I mean, 24 months. Anything after after that, outside that, or after that, might be a breach of the terms of agreement in that contract or uh, for that project. So, it is a projected duration of the project time frame is the projected duration of the project now any contractor who is giving a uh, contract like i said for such a job should ensure it's your work to ensure that the road is completed on time it is better to 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 promise someone a longer time and finish at a shorter time than promise them a short time and then you disappoint and disappoint and disappoint another point to note uh, about completion of time is you know for project is that uh, late completion or delivery of an agreed project will not please the sponsor of a project like i said it can actually lead to it can actually constitute a breach of trust i mean it can constitute a breach of contract for which you can be sued if there's if there are damages occasioned you're supposed to send uh, tomatoes for me from just to legal excuse me within 24 hours and you delayed and you sent it after 48 hours and the tomatoes are spoiled by the time they arrive they have perished because they are perishable products i don't need perish perished tomatoes so you have breached that contract you know and so you have to pay damages so besides time money and uh, of course besides besides time is money right and if a contractor fails to operate within a time frame inflation may set in that's problem Inflation may set it and delay the project completion or increase the cost. The cost that was budgeted for now becomes almost double or tripled and then or quadrupled because of time waste, waste and time waste for no one. Another thing apart from objective is performance. Performance. All projects have objective which have to, you know, which they have set out to achieve. For example. A public hospital project should have the objective of providing safe and affordable health care to the community. Performance is important. Also, a private sector educational project has the objective of providing quality education for the community or quality education. Performance in this case. Now, this is a performance objective. The objective is that result. The performance is that result. Quality education. For an educational project, quality healthcare for an educational healthcare. Mind you, apart from the performance objective, most projects have a quality objective. So, in a, in a, apart from performance, just performance, the performance should be quality. So, there's objective. There are two objectives. One objective is performance. The other objective is quality performance. That is, besides beyond just making sure you you deliver on the project, make sure it fits. It, it 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 fits the description make sure it is it conforms to standard you can't say you have delivered on the road you constructed and everywhere is the rain has already fallen and there are potholes everywhere within two, two weeks you, you you constructed a hospital you, you are constructing a, a hospital building and it has not even been in, inhabited and it's already collapsing or there are cracks all over that is performance but not quality performance right so for for example, a hospital should have the objective of providing healthcare. This is a performance objective. But the provision of service should be safe. That is quality objective. For example, hospital workers, that is nurses, doctors, midwives, and all that, while treating patients, must take adequate care so as not to in infect the patient with HIV through the use of unsterilized needles. This is a quality objective. So, of course, just carrying out the operation or the whatever the treatment is performance objective. 
but then the performance must be qualitative that is making sure that it is safe otherwise the aim will be defeated so most organizations have quality as their major objective another aspect of performance is reliability right so a good product should also have should also be reliable especially in the case of medical testing devices like ph meters they should be uh, the, the testing device should be reliable if not it will give out wrong information wrong data and wrong diagnosis leading to wrong prognosis that is treatment it you need the right diagnosis to to have to to, to provide the right prognosis in patient care for instance an unreliable thermometer may raise a false alarm Causing the health of a patient and lead to wrong diagnosis. That's what we're trying to say. And the wrong diagnosis will lead to a wrong prognosis. If your temperature is reading, it's supposed to be it's actually 37 and is and the thermometer is 40 and it's showing 57. They will say high fever. You have your this this uh, type of fever is very high, and you will be start beginning treatment, some kind of treatment for fever that you don't probably don't have. And the drug, the drug might just go there and raise. The fever that was not there and probably just activate something and then maybe the side effects will start you know replicating their effect in your body and then before you know it you become sick so another objective another major thing about project is budget all these are introductory issues i'm raising and it's very important you know all these things from the onset some of you might have had experience with this already but the emphasis is important it's significant so budget is an important aspect of project planning and all projects involve financial outlays. Now, the financial outlay that the expenditures attached to a project are usually controlled by the budget. There must be a budget. Budget is like a, a compass, a frame. You cannot go to the market, even no matter how much you have, you cannot finish. See, the richest human being cannot cannot buy everything in the market. If you enter the market without a budget, you will be tempted to buy what you need and what you don't need. In fact, even what you need, you may not have the resources for them to buy all. So you have to prioritize so budget helps that budget set a limit as to the quality i mean the quantity of funds a project can consume without a budget a project might never even finish because you it will always requires expenditure and the fund may not be there at the, same, at the same time so in most organizations the budget for every project is usually set aside that's important the reason why a project should be monitored is that failure to do so in some cases may lead to exhaustion like a set of funds and abandonment of the project in question it is, it is common to see abandoned projects all over in nigeria to be precise and other parts of africa especially in nigeria where we where we are I'm, I'm using as a case study you have road constructions that are not a government will start and before you know it it's abandoned because the contractors might have been mobilized but they are not paid and the contractors will use probably go to bank and take a loan that is costing them a lot and then they've not been paid and then the, probably the money has been released but some corrupt government officials probably have sat on it and then they've not released the money so the project has to be abandoned or you might even see the matter will become a, a, a litigation case a court matter where the, uh, the contractors will have to start dragging government to court for their money so the project will, will, will so they start this and they don't finish start this and don't finish all white elephant projects that are just there to deceive the masses that things are happening but nothing is happening really so this applies both to private and public sectors projects must be well budgeted for and the fund must be available at the time of its budget or is an in anticipation with clarity otherwise that project may fail and of the problem with abandoned project is that the money that has already been expended into it becomes wasted in fact, at the, at the time, even when it, the project has to be revisited, most time it will be started. It will have to start afresh. So everything has been wasted. Now, a major task facing project managers is how to balance these three objectives. These three objectives: budget, time frame, like I said, the cost, budget, and 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 all that. What it means is that all times, at all times, the focus of managers must be on the three these three items to retain the understanding of project objectives will go a step further to look at the simple triangle of objectives we will look at it subsequently in this project now project management organization uh how is project organized because i did say project management is all about coordination 
organization planning you know and all that controlling how it, how is the project to be organized it's very important to organize your project in such a way so these are the second topic i'm looking at under the introductory aspect we have dealt with the definition the nature and meaning of project management now we're looking at the organization of project management so by way of introduction uh projects require the commitment of resources which i have said and people to get them executed and to meet the project objectives if the project objectives are to be achieved the resources the people communication and jobs must be organized somebody must organize the resources someone must organize the people they, that is the human resource the material resource the financial resource the communication you know uh, system as well as the job or tasks to be done they must be organized you see something like when things are not organized it, they tend to be haphazard and results are really the, the objective may not really be achieved because of you know diversion the distractions the the, the shortiness uh, of, of things like they say uh, distraction is what you see when you take your eyes away from the center of attraction so without organization there will be a lot of distraction and wastages so uh, but of course there is no standard way in which projects should be organized there is really no standard way but they have to be organized so no one is saying there's a particular way to organize the project you can organize it the way you want but just make sure that it's organized so organization of project management varies significantly between organizations i've said that in fact management um project management organization or in project management organization, we shall discuss you know the importance of communication in project management because we're going to talk about organization without communication and of course we shall also examine the three types of project management organizations there are three types of ways to organize the project i want to see them in this uh segment of course this discussion will enable us to understand the fundamental organization structures that are necessary to ensure effective management of your project okay so let's talk about communication in project management communication is very important even in relationship in marriages in in, in social you know networking in social rela relations international relations between states between countries it, it's important in every in, even in an organization so according to management theory uh, it is said that communication is very important in every organization as a matter of fact the organization structure helps to describe the clear lines of authority it, it, when you look at the hierarchy of authority is actually a representation of as you can see in this in this slide there is a a, 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 a clear you know some kind of you know a relationship you know a linkage between the organization in terms of communication there is a line of command there's a chain of command also communication in an organization is a two-way affair communication flow from top to bottom and then from bottom to top very important communication ensures that the job of information and coordination are made easy without communication it means the job cannot be the information and coordination of the job cannot be easily achieved so a problem usually will, will arise in a project situation uh, is usually is how best to structure communication flow so as not to disrupt activities in an existing setup for instance uh, a rural hospital if it's undergoing a training on the administration or how to administer a new malaria drug now the problem will be if the supervisor uh, is a community development officer from a health ministry who is much junior to, to the head of the community health department let me give you an example uh in one of the states in nigeria uh one of my a friend or an acquaintance a senior friend who just retired as a, a, a an aig assistant inspector general of police was telling me just last week how he when he was a commissioner of police he was posted to one of the states to serve as a senior officer to serve on a junior officer as a in acting capacity in that state and it was for political reasons he said he will have just resigned because usually if you are if if a junior officer is appointed you know ahead of you let's say some someone who's your junior is appointed 
to be the inspector general police and you are assistant inspector general, you would rather prefer to resign. But he decided to humble himself under that man and he learned and he did everything. And today he said that the person is is better placed and he too, because of that humility, he got placements where he ordinarily he wouldn't have gotten. So what you're trying to say is this uh communication is very important in dealing with some of this, you know, you know, some of this uh what is called internal wrangling in an organization in terms of you know all this seniority and all that. So let's say in an organization like where you bring a community health worker who is a junior to supervise and to administer a drug, a malaria, malaria drug in a particular community, which is a project. Now, the person in charge of that community, uh, in that hospital or the ministry or the, the health facility in that community is a most senior officer. Now, he won't want to be directed or supervised or instructed by a junior officer just because the junior officer is from the, the, the headquarters or from the, 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 the donor agency. No, so there must be some kind of understanding, uh, you know. So that is the importance of communication in a project management, you know, um, affair. It is also obvious that uh, the malaria project will require communication between not just the officers now, but the outside parties. That is the community development officer and the hospital. Of course, the communication flow must be structured in such a way as not to introduce friction or mass discontent arising from loss of team spirit. Team spirit is important in any communication. Everyone must be carried along and be made to see that they are part and parcel of the project and that they not just uh, you know, uh, have a sense of belonging but that they actually own the project. Let them own it. So, the need for a project manager. Very important. Very important. You can't talk about organization of a project you know, the, without a project manager. Actually, they, it's like in a movie, you know, they, in a movie, the most important person in a movie is movie project. Movie is a project. I, I'm involved in, in movie uh, shooting and all that. As a foundation, we also use movie as our strategy for communicating or, or to pass disseminating a campaign to disseminating whatever we want to disseminate. But you see, a, a project manager in a, in a project, you know, uh, work is like the most important person in a movie which is the director you no know, even a superstar the actor the key actor the star actors are not important in fact the director determines who who, who features in that movie determines even instructs them on how to act what to say so the director is very he director directs the camera he directs the the uh the actors he directs the uh this the sound pr person he directs the, 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 the director of photography. Everyone on set is directed by the director. So, the same thing in a project to work. The project manager is very important. Now, apart from being uh, having some kind of, like I said, apart from having my expertise as a professor of administration, which is the same thing with uh, uh, management, you know, uh, I have experience in project management. You know, one of my, my NGO I worked with uh, earlier, Paradigm Initiative Nigeria, I worked as their project manager for ICT policy and all that. I understand, f apart from working for Kingsland Foundation, I work with other organizations at, the, at, the, you know, at different levels as legal advisors and all that. But one of the areas I've been instrumental is in the area of project management. And uh, no project in an organization can succeed without a project manager. Like I said, it's very important. So in an ordinary life situation like in a company, a project manager may be an individual who is appointed to manage a project, a particular project. There may be many projects, but a particular one may be assigned to a particular person to manage. You know, so in some cases, project managers are consulting firms. It could be a consulting firm, you know, of either architects or other professionals. In a building construction, in a building project, for instance, architects might be consulted to, to provide, you know, uh, to manage the project from the beginning to the end. They may be appointed to oversee very large and complex projects. So a project manager ensures that all the activities relating to the project are planned, coordinated and closely directed to meet the set objective. You know, so key functions of the project manager are communication and coordinating. He has to communicate about the resources, he has to communicate the time, I mean, the, the everything, everything that is needed. He has to also communicate with the stakeholders, he has to always be in charge, you know, 
doing all that and then coordinating these resources coordinating this uh, uh stakeholders coordinating everything to make sure like i said in a, a director in a movie the manager must make sure everything is moving smoothly of course the project manager implements the project and reports ret routinely to the project initiator or the purchaser or let's say the the um the promoter of the company or the con the person who gave the contract now what are the types of project management structures we have basically four which is the functional metrics the project metrics the pure uh, project team organization and side teams now there will be no time to go through all this uh just i'll just explain them in a jiffy uh because these are self-explanatory and uh the they really do not matter much in terms of uh they are basically a question of uh choice you know any project being managed can fall into any of these four so what is the functional metrics you know functional metrics actually has to do with project management where uh, a project manager is appointed within an organization which has other routine activities within an organization in such a situation there is the existing department and works flow continuously the project manager would when appointed within such an existing framework is usually required to pay attention to the new project he's only a part of an organization but a new project is about to be executed so you appoint him Let, let's say in a bank they want to start a new uh, there's a particular uh, promotion activities like for instance they want to start uh, let's say they want to uh, start a particular program to say everyone who uh, let's say a deposit and win kind of project the more you deposit within that bank someone will be appointed to take charge of that project some members will be drafted as committee into that you know and then they, they carry it out maybe for a time after that they collapse and so you can see a committee work as a project and then the, the person in charge like the chairman as the manager of that project it's not a it's not have a fast rule so in this particular situation the project manager ordinarily plays the role of a coordinator who has no direct line of authority over any other managers or existing staff he just brought in to carry out a project and then he he doesn't have a particular he doesn't have absolute authority actually he reports to those who appointed him just as other members in a project management situation this type of organizational arrangement is referred to as functional metrics that is what we mean he's already functioning in an organization he's only appointed to oversee a project after which probably he may go back to his normal occupation so it's he's within the organization it's not like someone you bring from uh, that is brought from outside to execute a project no the person is already part of the organization so if for any reason the project manager is not receiving the level of cooperation he requires problems arise and disrupt the project management task now Functional metrics organizations are mainly found in private manufacturing companies with single or multiple product lines. Situations arise where many project managers exist in a firm organization and have different projects which they manage. They may begin to comp you know, compete for the resources of the organization, resulting in conflict among them. See, uh, uh, now the next one is project metrics. Project money, we, we dealt with functional metrics, now it's project me metrics. You see, unlike functional metrics in a project matrix, project managers are given greater authority. You see, in functional, they are not given authority. They are only they are part of the organization, and most of the times they are just given an assignment for a, a period of time. And but here in function in, in project metrics, the coordinate the managers are given greater authority over other functional managers. In this situation, it is usual for the departments to contribute staff. That, that they release to the project manager working on a particular project. For example, in a, comp in a computerization of a bank, where the project manager is appointed, staffs are handpicked from other department or unit to join the project team. Of course, in this situation, as long as the, the computerization project lasts, all the project team staff report to the project manager. You know, hence the project metric situation makes room for effective project management but it also has its own limitations. What are those limitations? Let's see them. You know, uh, uh, one of the limitations actually is, is the fact that the project manager usually uh, may have to contend with other issues or other, you know, authority figures. But that is uh, not to say 
because of that it, it is still it's still advantageous because uh the the more free hands you know a project manager has the more effective and more in, in, in you know the more creative he might be and more innovative that way you are tend to achieve more okay the next one is pure project team organization here a work group or project team is created for each project with the project manager as head of the team almost similar to the last one but he's head of the team in this type of arrangement the project manager is given absolute authority over the project team. This time around is not just a greater authority, but absolute over the you know the team and the project. For example, in a community water project, a project manager might be appointed to handle that particular project. The team will one undertake the design and construction of the necessary building with the total control, absolute control of the project manager without any outside interference nobody telling you what to do or how to do it of course the design and installation of the plants and machinery will also be done by the team of course purchase they will also purchase the necessary equipment and of course see that the water project is completed that means that gives them you know they have upper hand they have higher uh, open hand to to, to to run stuff now side team is the last one now at, at, at times situations arise that warrant side teams to be created this is usually where a project is located far away from the organization's head office uh, in such a, a, a situation for example uh, where, uh, where a communication company like Glove or MTN or Airtel, whatever a communication company embarking on setting up a communication mast let's say somewhere in Yola in Adama State or anywhere now in that situation it will be very appropriate to raise a site team to be deployed at that place under the leadership of the project uh, team man leader or the project manager the team leader supervises the project and reports day-to-day -day progress to the head office in lagos or wherever it may be located that is the end about uh, organization of projects we need to know how it's been organized now let's look at administration function in project management or project organization the administration functions what are the administration functions in project organization um, by way of introduction these are all different arrangements under which a project could be organized here we'll discuss the administration function in these different organization types and of course we we'll also try to examine the merits and the merit or, or the demerits or the disadvantage of the various organization types now, when an organization wants to embark on a project, some of the central questions it will need to answer or that will arise include this. What type of project management organization should be adopted and why? Should a project team be built and over which should, uh, should be placed a project manager to report to management? Should the organization adopt a functional metrics or is it uh, or what whichever which which uh, organization type should it have ad, you know adopt now if the answer is yes the project manager if appointed will be held responsible for the project but has no direct line of authority over the staff that he or she works with within the project our interest in such situation is based on the fact that the key function of the project manager are administration and management get this in this uh, situation the main function of the administration the manager is uh, the project manager is actually administration and management he administers the project and he manages it but he doesn't have control over the staff he does not command them they are commanded from the uh, head office or from the top and so his fo his major focus is to see that this project is delivered within time and he works with the people at his uh, beck and call but they are not directly uh, under his control so the the administration function will depend on to a large extent on the type of project management structure that is in place in most cases project managers do not select their own staff or be allowed to recruit staff they have to work with the people provided and that means they need people who are cooperative otherwise the work the project can be frustrated by non challenge attitude by some kind of you know uh 
whimsical attitude those who work as if they are being forced but you know there's this control there's this power you have when you appoint your team you know that they'll be loyal to they'll be like you know they will be most likely be uh be, uh, be loyal to you they will most likely comply so most of the time staff are selected and imposed on the project manager again the members of the project team may not all share this the same or general sentiment attached to the project that's why uh, it's always good sometimes that the project manager uh, also be in charge of who he works with so some members will end up becoming passive members while others might have a sense of team spirit and contribute passively or positively rather to a team objective so in each case project managers are still faced with the task of administration they must administer the project administer the staff and all that now let us uh, start by discussing the administration function in a pure project team you know we did discuss the, the, the various form of project organization so now what are the administration function in this so for a pure project team, when a pure project team has been set up, it has a primary advantage that resources and energies can be directed towards meeting the objective set for the team. Of course, in most of the pure, uh, in most of pure project teams, they are independent and also have their own budgetary allocation of resources of both money and people. That is one of the characteristics of this kind of organization or project management organization an important aspect of pure project team is the idea of motivation which invariably affects the team spirit when people are motivated team spirit is generated or you know boosted and this actually helps in team building in addition to of course uh, advancing the project so in most pure pro project teams the members usually will feel a deep sense of belonging and strive to meet team goals and objectives of course, everybody is working within a pure uh, project team report either directly to the project manager or to another manager who reports to the project manager. It is usually easy for us to see that in this situation, the line of authority is very clear. Of course, communication flow is also easy from the top to the bottom and from the bottom to the top, as the case may be. So, instruction move from the project manager to other managers within the project and then to other members of the team now when i say project manager and other managers we mean that the overall uh, person in charge is a project manager but you may have other managers just like you have maybe you may have a general manager and then you have maybe unit managers like managing managers of other units in an organization so apart from the clearly defined communication lines there are clearly defined lines of authority in a project team of course the command structure is perfect now, what are the advantages of pure project team in, it, in, in terms of administration? One is motivation and leadership. A major advantage of pure project team is the fact that it, it's the issue of motivation and leadership which it provides. Of course, uh, in, in, in most teams, members are motivated. And when people are motivated, you know what happens? Leadership becomes easier. And of course, administration is also made much easier. Secondly, good, it has good and easy communication because of the nature and structure of pure team uh, project team communication flows are fast and efficient of course also information moves very fast within the team all right okay one disadvantage of uh, pure project team in terms of administration includes uh the fact that uh they tend to be rather rigid or inflexible and everything within the team is defined for example if a team if a project team has five engineers working on a damn project the absence of two of the engineers may critically affect the job since it is very easy to bring in temporary members into a structural project team again of course situations may arise when the uh, medical when the medical doctor for instance is attached to a project team of about 20 people when in you know the alternative the same medical doctor could treat 100 people daily or patients daily in a general hospital so when such situations arise it is easy to notice inefficient use of scarce resources rigidity can also uh, you know arise from the following situation one where the budget for the project team becomes insufficient or where the project manager is on the on you know on 
is unable to you know to deviate from uh, the project objective even where this will benefit the organization that rigidity can actually affect you don't want to deviate from the objective even when things are no longer what uh, they should be of course administration function in matrix organization let me discuss the administration function uh, the matrix organization is structured along the establishment of specialized function group within the organization for example in a university teaching hospital you will you will have various function functional departments each of the department will have specialists work is established is expected to actually continue in perpetuity as long as the teaching hospital exists the teaching hospital may inf, you know initiate several projects but they may be of short duration now the advantage of matrix organization the second organization is that it is a building of competence for example in the university teaching hospital which i mentioned you know we will note that it is structured along departmental lines it is structured in the department of surgery for instance there will be so many surgeons and of course some will be theoretic for instance thoracic uh, surgeons we have plastic surgeons cardiologists and several that is in just one department then you have such in different departments of course there will be normal seminars and cross fertilization of ideas and of course knowledge therefore we can say that a matrix organization encourages the build up of skills organized along specialized lines for example in an engineering firm we will have civil engineers mechanical engineers you know electrical engineers and architects and so on and so forth all this will come together to contribute you know in a kind of cross fertilization of ideas and then uh, the organization will grow and then uh, the, the project will also be enhanced its achievement will be qualitative though they are structured along departmental lines most members end up acquiring more skills due to cross fertilization of knowledge like i just said this type of advantage is not available to a specialized engineer you know deployed to a supervise a particular project now advantages of disadvantage of metric organization one of them is that the issue of split responsibility among members let me move uh hybrid organization we also have hybrid organizations some of sometimes these organizations are either project teams or metrics or they're actually hybrid maybe of one of one or two of the ones we've discussed and uh uh in a hybrid organization the various specialist groups are arranged along functional lines you know let me move a major advantage of this uh, of in administration of hybrid organization is that the project teams are within the department can actually count on the technical and managerial support of their department you know for example the, the Ebola control team within the department of community medicine can actually support from the department all right let me move now project definition is very important to define a project Project definition is the process which seeks to describe the project from the idea stage, that is the ideation stage, to the stage when the project has been completed. That is project definition. You can't start a project that you cannot define. You have to define the parameters. You have to tell us what the project is all about. You have to ideate it. You know, the ideation stage, let the idea come to fruition and let it become tangible. Then we we'll know that we have a project, not a not some kind of blurry or some kind of uncertain project or elephant white elephant project no it has to be certain it has to be so all information about the project is usually embodied in the definition of the project usually before a project starts it must be properly defined so that the parties involved properly understand their roles and duties in the project now type of project cycle the project cycle tries to establish or describe the various stages that are involved in the conception of the project idea to when the project is executed or actually takes off understanding the project cycle is is really very important as it enables us to get the total picture of a project so the project cycles are basically the project idea stage the project identification stage the project evaluation stage the project selection stage and lastly the execution stage now if there's time we'll discuss all these but due to time i would just want to go over them in a in a jiffy now the project idea stage basically talks about the project idea uh the first stage of the is the first stage of the cycle it's about the i you know the idea of the project itself and like i said and uh it's for example a rare farmer uh farmers fertilizer distribution project is most likely to emanate from a state ministry of agriculture 
so uh, the idea is supposed to emanate from a particular place or the uh, sponsor now uh, a, pro a, a proposal to build you know all these are part of the project idea the first stage now the project identification stage after the project idea the next stage is identification stage the project identification stage consolidates the idea stage it actually after you you uh, you frame it in your mind you need to identify it you know you need to be able to point it you know then uh, you know and so on and so forth let me go to the project evaluation say this is where uh, the project has been identified the next step is to evaluate the project it actually involves estimating the cost the cost we're going to talk about the cost fully in in this in part two but that is what evaluation means taking uh, stock of the cost the implication cost implication and all that so um project selection stage has to do with selecting uh the project you know and then making sure that uh we have finally if you had like three four projects that you identified you know selecting one means the one that probably you want to select one for for now and execute you know so uh selection stage is important then in the selection project top management usually considers the financial cost outlays involved and match them with the benefits to be derived from the project so projects that add positive benefits to the community should be selected usually of course, project execution has to do with executing the project. And like I said, in the last uh, part, we are going to discuss project execution. So there's no need to, to discuss this uh, in, in details, but that is uh, what it entails. Now, project team building, which uh, I will discuss in brief, uh, there are different ways to... So a team is very important. A team is very important in achieving the goal of a project. Now it, it helps in, for team spirit. It creates high expectation. It creates willingness and all that. Then communication, like I said, is very important, and it, it's in different stages, but either horizontal or vertical, that is from top to bottom, bottom to top. Uh, without a strong team, you can't achieve anything in the project because some will be scattering and some will be building. You know, so there are different types of team. There's team-based structure. There are just different types of team. But what matters is that you must have a team uh, of Spirited, a team of uh, motivated, you know, a team of intellectuals who are interested in seeing to the success of the project. Now, these are all forms of group dynamic and team building. Uh, team building is very important. People must be bonded. They must have a leader that is ready to lead them to achieve that project. You know, he must be able to organize, to distribute. And then, multi, multi, and then uh, monitor uh, the success. Then teamwork. The project team is not the end of the task ahead. The most important part is how to build team spirit. The fact that you have the right crop of people to carry out the project is not is not the most important thing. The most important is that now that they've come together, there will be no rivalry, no no you know no no internal wrangling, but that they will all work in synergy to see that the work is achieved. Members of the team may come from different various backgrounds, various departments, but at the end of the day, they should have the same purpose, the same mission, and all that. Uh, they must have the same goal. Uh, one of the things they may have is one goal, one unique goal. They must have uh, cohesiveness and support. They must uh, have a team spirit they are working with. You know, uh, you know, they must have high expectations, like I mentioned, and willingness also. Communication within the team is very important. You know, I mentioned all that. And then uh, communication, like I said, could be vertical or horizontal. Um, coming to towards the end of this introductory part. Now, building good interpersonal relation within the team is very important to build interpersonal relations. They need to connect. They need to synergize. They need to, you know, see themselves as one. They need to build a strong rapport. You know, interpersonal relationship is important. You know, poor communication can affect uh, team spirit. It can lead to you know tension between them it can lead to corruption strife st you know strike general dishonesty crime in the workplace disloyalty to the organization on healthy internal wrangling and rivalry between the staff tension among them and all that you know principle of interpersonal relationship uh, helps 
one of them is that you should learn to be accommodative keep your boss in form of your, uh, whatever you're doing avoid gossips in the workplace display positive attitude to work be friendly and cooperative treat your you know your your subordinates with respect stick to the chain of command learn to be you know accommodative remember that other staffs come from different backgrounds and also you are also from different backgrounds and you need to understand them and you know tolerate them you know act like things you know not, don't act individually learn to you know wear a smile be so all these are part and parcel of an effective team be respectful be honest be polite you know uh, treat others the way you would like want to be treated if you are the boss you mustn't boss it over everyone but show uh, respect respect is reciprocal show good hygiene be responsible the team should be be polite people should greet each other in the morning and afternoon and evening always learn to apologize when you're wrong avoid aggressive behaviors you mustn't be aggressive some things can be achieved more with politeness than with aggressiveness always say always learn to say thank you when uh, you shown favor or kindness show interest in other people's problems you know that is how the team can be built learn to wear a smile on your face always uh, always having a st straight face always boning, always having tight face all the time even makes you older older than your uh, you know than your age and it's, it's not you know, so smile often smile it doesn't make you look stupid or, f or foolish it only makes you uh, happy look happy and joyful and responsible thank you very much for this time look forward to seeing you in the next uh, uh, segment the next section of this training thank you